Hello, folks, and welcome to the Vertigo Tea Party and another Tea Time. Today, we're going to be talking about Kotaku's blacklisting by Bethesda and Ubisoft. First, let's look at the facts. We know for sure that the editor-in-chief of Kotaku posted an article recently, which uh, this and all other references made will be posted in links in the description below the video if you want to check the uh, check them for yourself, which I generally advise that you do. But anyway, uh, Stephen Totillo, I believe I'm pronouncing his name correctly, posted an article stating that he, uh, or Kotaku, had been blacklisted by Ubisoft and Bethesda for some time. Uh, he believes, uh, per the article, that, uh, that this blacklisting was due to re releasing information uh, about games that had not been announced by those publishers yet. I believe um, Fallout 4 and Doom for Bethesda, and I think Assassin's Creed uh, Syndicate was the one for Ubisoft, and uh, probably some others as well. So basically, they, they don't know why they've been blacklisted, because Bethesda and Ubisoft, according to uh, Mr. Tatillo, has, he said that they've not come back to them on any questions asking about it, including this article. Apparently they did not respond uh, to requests for comment about this article. So they don't know why they're blacklisted. And to be completely upfront, again, we're speculating that they've been blacklisted. I think it's relatively safe to assume that one, Kotaku wouldn't flat out lie about them being blacklisted. And two, it's probably not an accidental overlooking by both Bethesda and Ubisoft that they just haven't gotten back to Kotaku. I, I think it's safe to say Kotaku is big enough, whether you like them or not, that they're not going to be ignored uh, or, or just be looked over by accident by these large publishers. And especially given the time frames that he lists, I tend to believe that this probably was uh, an intentional thing whether it be like a written mandate or kind of just something they said back and forth. It's like, oh, just ignore everyone from those. However, they're doing it. But keep in mind, again, we are assuming they're blacklisted, which I think is a relatively safe assumption based on various variables there. Uh, and two, that they're blank being blacklisted due to the leaks. Again, we don't know that. That's the biggest question mark, right? Is we, we think it's due to leaks. But from my reading of the article... Uh, Steven Totillo seems to really believe that it's due to the leaks. So we're going to focus mostly on the leaks. There's a few angles that I want to talk about because I think there's various important aspects of this entire thing. But to begin with, we're going to focus on the assumption, because it is an assumption, that they are being blacklisted by Ubisoft and Bethesda due to leaking information. And when I say leaking information, again, my understanding is that they were given information by disgruntled employee or whoever that and then they disseminated that information it wasn't a case where the company came to them officially and said hey look here's some top secret information don't release this and then they released it anyway uh, that would completely put a whole nother spin on the stuff that we're going to talk about but my understanding is it was more of a the information was kind of slid under the table to them and they reported they reported on it. They didn't do the leak themselves. Hopefully that makes uh, hopefully that makes sense. So let's again let's go forward with all that information uh, in mind. Before we start, I want to talk somewhat briefly about why the blacklisting is bad. First, I want to get this out of the way, and I see this a lot, and I see this from people who should know better. People saying, oh, well, they're mad because they're going to have to pay for their games. Does anybody honestly believe that? Like, when it comes to getting free review copies, getting the game for free, in my opinion, even as someone who gets free copies of games as a very small channel that covers these, is a very, very, very small part. Uh, it's, of course, nice and odd to pay for the games that I want to cover, but it's it's a complete afterthought, right? What matters when it comes to getting press release copies, in particular copies that come and that we can cover before the game is released to the public, is being able to cover and talk about those games in detail before they're released. That's what matters. Getting the game for no cost is is like not maybe not even the cherry on top to me. Again, it's nice to get them free, but it's something I don't even think about when I get 
free copies of games. And it's probably not really high on the list of concerns for bigger sites like uh, Kotaku and Rock Paper Shotgun and any of these sites. So I please, for God's sake, stop bringing up the free copies versus having to pay for it. I think that's not that's a nonsensical argument. If you want to make a valid argument, the reason blacklisting matters uh, is one thing I just talked about is getting those review copies early and being able to talk about them early. Because when I can, I, again, and this comes from personal experience and obviously a lot of this is common sense is if I can get a hold of a game early. So for example, I got Saints Row 4 early and was given permission to stream it before, before any, like before a lot of other folks were because of context I have with, uh, you know, PR people. And that was big for me because if you wanted information about that game, St. Row 4 in this case, there wasn't a whole lot of places to watch. So when people come on Twitch and they see somebody streaming St. Row 4, it's like, oh, that's awesome. I want to see somebody play. So my competition in, in that regard was low. I had very little competition. So I got more eyeballs and more views and more subscribers that way which was great for me. Uh, so that's, that's in my opinion, the big nasty thing about blacklisting. Now I'm assuming a bigger site like Kotaku, there's more going on as well. They don't get invited to industry events. So they miss out on playing like really early versions of games like alphas uh, and stuff at E3 and all these other little press events. That kind of stuff obviously is going to help as well. So they can do sneak peeks like months before the game is released. So Again, it's more about getting early hands on to these various games and, you know, exclusive information. Like maybe they get to be the ones who uh, show the screenshots when the first game when the game is first comes out. Stuff like that. That's what really hurts because the clicks are what matters. We all know that by now, right? That's why we got a problem right now with clickbaity headlines, right? Is getting them clicks. And one fantastic way to get them clicks is to be one of the only or one of the very first to get a story out uh, about a detail or detailed story out about games that people are interested in. So that's why the blacklisting matters. Disregarding everything else, that's why being put on the bad list, the naughty list of developers and publishers is a bad thing for anyone doing games coverage, whether it be press, YouTube, Twitch, whatever. All right, so... With that out of the way, let's move on to the next thing. Again, us going back, we're assuming that the blacklist was due to releasing um, or reporting on, sorry, reporting on existing leaks. Now, I understand the stance of companies like Bethesda and Ubisoft, but I actually, on this particular thing, I mostly stand with Kotaku, which does make me throw up in my mouth a little bit. Uh, it is, you know, it's no surprise or it's no secret that I hold Kotaku in very little regard. But I do try to be fair, if nothing else, uh, when I look at any kind of situation like this. And for the most part, if they were blacklisted due to reporting on leaks, then I think it was kind of a shitty thing for Bethesda and Ubisoft to do. That doesn't mean I don't understand their position. I absolutely do. When they're working on this game in secret, they want to make a big reveal at E3 or some other big event. And it's kind of ruined because some employee of theirs or a contractor or a family member or whatever it was, you know, wanted to leak the information for whatever reason they might have had. And then Kotaku or whoever reports on it kind of taking the wind out of their sails. So I understand, I understand the position and this is not something that I feel 100% on. I've heard good arguments for the blacklisting and I've heard good arguments against it. Currently, you know, I'm still kind of analyzing data, but my gut reaction is again, oddly enough uh, to side with Kotaku and think that, you know, I think it's kind of, kind of crappy that you, that you did this. And we'll, we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit a little bit more in detail why I feel that way. Um, I guess the, the big thing, in fact, we'll talk about it now. Here's my, here's my problem with this. And to be honest, this is a slippery slope, logical fallacy. So again, you know, I'm, I'm not set in stone on this opinion, but my problem is, is that it could set a bad precedence. 
it could set the bad idea that you say things that we don't like, uh, we being the game publishers and the game developers, you say things that we don't like, we're going to stop dealing with you. We're going to stop sending you preview copies. We're going to stop inviting you to press events, right? That's what I'm afraid of. That's the type of mentality I absolutely think is incredibly bad for the industry. Uh, and if you wonder why certain companies go, this game is bad. Uh, it's not very good. It gets boring. It's very stale. It's been done a hundred times before. I didn't really enjoy it. Seven out of 10. Why do, why do you think part of that is? Part of that is because they don't want to piss off the publishers. I'm sure there's other reasons as well. And you can all have a fun fun uh, discussing all kinds of theories and conspiracy theories as far as that goes. But I don't have any doubt in my mind personally that part of that reason they get good coverage is because they want to stay in the good graces of these publishers. And if they ream these games for having terrible bugs and horrible DLC schemes and all this other stuff, then they get blacklisted because the publisher only wants to deal with sites which are saying positive things about them. And again, slippery slope fallacy, uh, just because you don't want to talk to someone because they leaked uh, private information does not necessarily mean they're going to fall that way, right? So that's a fair enough uh, counter argument. It's just something that that I'm, I am very concerned about, to say the least. I want to say this as well. I support, no matter what, even if I change my mind and disagree with it, I do support Kotaku's choice to release the information. I think they should have that right to release the information. Again, assuming they were under, you know, uh, they were under NDA or something like that. That's a whole nother, again, that's not what we're talking about. If they were given information under NDA and they released it, then again, another argument. But assuming they were just fed this information from another source, I support their choice of reporting on it. Uh, I mean, that's kind of what they're there to do is to post information about video games, right? Even if it's rumor, because God knows they do love reporting on rumor, uh, even more love reporting on rumor as fact, but that's neither here nor there. However, I also fully support the right of these companies to blacklist them. Just because a company does something, I, a company or individual does something I don't agree with, even if they do something that I find is assholish, that doesn't mean I, I don't support them. And, you know, I guess, you know, I don't know how to describe what I mean exactly. Obviously legally they can do whatever they want, but I support their, their right to do it. I don't think they should be blocked from being able to do that. Um, I also support Kotaku going public with the blacklisting. Because despite what some people are saying, I think that is valid. I think it is a valid thing for people to know that this company doesn't want to play ball with your one of your favorite press outlets, right? Uh, you might have second thoughts about purchasing from that company because you feel like maybe they have something to hide or some other reason you want to avoid that company because they refuse to deal with this, these certain press sites uh, because kind of going back to what I was saying, you feel like maybe they're not dealing with this, this press site that you like because they're very hard hitting and because they will be the first to point out critical bugs and whatnot. So from that angle, I would actually like to know that this company is doing something that I think is, is very shady right? The blacklisting again, in this case, I don't think the blacklisting is completely unfounded, even though I disagree with it. It's still nice to know that it's there. And it does make me a little bit weary of Ubisoft and Bethesda, but not, not a whole lot. Um, but to keep kind of keep going on this train of thought, I also support any company that hears about the blacklisting and decides to take action based on that, including during their own blacklist of Kotaku, because they're afraid that those, you know, Kotaku will publish something like this that's supposed to be kind of like understood that you don't talk about, right? So again, I might disagree with the particular actions that any of these companies take, but I think they all have the right to do so, which 
I guess you could argue it's not really saying much. But anyway, now my question for those of you who are okay with blacklisting a website for reporting on leaks, whether it be directly to the site or otherwise. First off, if I'm Kotaku, oh God, sorry. If I'm Kotaku and some disgruntled employee or whoever comes to me and says, yeah, they're already working on uh, Elder Scrolls 6 and it's going to be set underwater and there's some other information now and I report on it. Would it be okay? Do you think that other websites reported on it as well? Rock, paper, shotgun, uh, giant bomb, these IGN. Would it be okay to report on Kutaku's reporting of the blacklist? If not, do you think they should be blacklisted too? If you agree blacklisting on report, the reporting of, of leaks is, is okay. That was my first very poorly worded question. Sorry about that. I kind of didn't have that one written down and it kind of popped in my head. Um, my next question would be what can, where is your line? Where do you draw your line? What I mean to say is when does it stop being okay to be blacklisted for reporting on a certain thing? So for example, uh, Assassin's Creed Unity. Obviously, a lot of sites really harped on the bugginess of, of Unity. Would it be okay to be blacklisted then? Do, and, and again, when I say okay, I should specify, I mean, do you think it's... This is not really the word I'm looking for, but is it more morally okay? Again, that's not really the word I'm looking for, but I think you get what I mean. Uh, obviously, they have the legal right, and I guess you could say they have the ethical right, But I guess my question is, do you think now it's starting to be a little bit shady, a little bit shitty that they're blacklisting you because you pointed out existing problems in the game that might put people away from buying? Do you think that's okay? Do you think there is no line? They could blacklist them for any reason. And again, we're talking purely from a standpoint of blacklisting being okay in the moral slash ethical slash no, no, that's not shady at all. Kind of a thing. So you think that if you report negatively on the game at all, let's say, all right, how about we, we do an extreme and say, Bethesda will blacklist any site that does not review every one of their games and DLCs with an eight out of 10 or above. Would you be okay with that? If, if not, why would you be okay with Ubisoft blacklisting a website just because they reported on existing bugs and they did it in a fair manner where they were not overblowing it to make it seem like it was bigger than it was. So for a great example would be, would it be okay for Microsoft to blacklist a website for reporting on the number of red rings that the Xbox 360 had? Because remember Microsoft initially said that, oh, those numbers are overblown. Uh, Nowhere near this many people are having this problem when it absolutely was not the case when tons of people were having red rings. So would you be okay with Microsoft blacklisting a site that tells consumers, hey, there's a lot of problems with these Xboxes. You need to be wary with buying them. Are you okay with that? If so, I would really like to hear a justification of black uh, of that being not a shitty thing to do when you're fairly notifying consumers to be careful on buying this product because it is known to have problems. I would love to hear justification for that. All right. So let's change gears a little bit here. I'm going to talk about the things that I have been hearing the press talk about that I am 100% not okay with. So since this has happened, Unsurprisingly, a lot of various gaming journalism websites and editors and writers and whatnot have kind of been circling the wagons around Kotaku and saying that, you know, this blacklist is is really bad, how brave of Kotaku to post this, and how this blacklisting is incredibly bad for keep for keeping the news sites independent of of uh, the publishers and developers uh, it's really infringing on their rights or in their abilities to 
fairly report negative things and critical things about these games, about these companies, without fear of reprisal from, from said companies. I have a big problem with that because this is not what this is about. This is about, right? This has been presented as they were blacklisted for leaking. Uh, they were uh, blacklisted for leaking uh, like new games coming out that hadn't been announced, unannounced games, things like that. That's not the same thing as being critical of a game for bugs. That is not the same thing of criticizing a company for questionable DLC schemes. That is not the same as, you know, writing articles uh, about, you know, unscrupulous activity, uh, like D like a questionable DRM that has been placed in a new game. This is not the same thing. All right. Let's not get these two things mixed up. That I, that's where I have a huge problem reporting on the possibility of a new game or like uh, the rumors of a new game coming out before it's released. This is not some great thing, not some great service you're providing to the consumer. This is not some critical information a consumer needs to know. And by the way, before somebody says it, and it mentions it in the Kotaku article too, I believe. No, we all know this is about games entertainment, right? This is not end of the world shit. If they don't, if they get blocked by whoever, somebody's not going to die. Somebody isn't going to be seriously injured because of some information that Kotaku or rock, paper, shotgun, or giant bomb isn't able to post, right? I'm speaking purely from within uh, a, a closed, enclosed environment of gaming, right? So when I say things are critical or necessary, I'm speaking of it in in those terms. Again, obviously it's not necessary that I know Fallout 4 has got bugs or I'll play it and have a seizure and die, right? That's not what we're talking about. So just to be clear in case someone wants to try to be a little nitpicky. But um, but yes, it, in no way, shape, or form are you going to argue, get me to believe that posting leaked information like this, uh, again, that a new game is just coming out, is critical consumer information. You're not doing some some great service to 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 the consumers. Yes, it's interesting. Of course, I want to know that a new Fallout game is coming out because I love the series. Yes, a lot of Assassin's Creed fans are going to want to know uh, as soon as they can, just out of interest, where the next Assassin's Creed game is going to be. Because you know there's going to be another damn one. I mean, they're never going to stop. So they want to know where it's going to be and maybe some possible release dates, but it's more out of just a general interest thing. They're not spending any money on this. Uh, they're not going to, they're not spending any money on this. It's not important in that way. It's just interesting. You know, as well as I do, the reason they leak this information, the reason they post on rumors and often present them as facts is for clicks. They want the clicks. We know this. Don't pretend that this punishment, this blacklisting is you're not a martyr. You're right. Don't paint this like you're a damn martyr. Don't piss on our legs and tell us it's raining. Don't pretend like, you know, you're, you're taking a bullet for the gamer. You're taking a bullet for the consumer by printing this must know information. You're posting leaks. Now, Again, if they blacklisted you for posting bugs, if they blacklisted you for being critical of day one $50 DLC, if they blacklist you for, you know, saying that the game feels like a, a poor iteration of last year's or a quick cash in or something like that, then that now we have a problem. And I'm going to stand with you, no matter who you are, and say that that's bullshit. I will be right, right, right there with you. Whoever you are, even if I don't like your site, bullshit is bullshit, regardless of how it, you know, who it happens to. So I'm right there with you, but don't sit here and try to, again, play the martyr for posting fucking leaks of upcoming games, not the same thing. And that's, that's my big problem because they know exactly what they're doing. They know damn well what they're doing. 
They are intentionally trying to twist things around to make it sound like, oh, we're, we're just doing our job. You know, this, this tramples on our ability to be critical of these companies. No, it doesn't. It absolutely doesn't. If they blacklisted you for, and, I, and I'm stressing if, because we don't know the whole story, if they blacklisted you for the leaks, then no, it does not hurt your, your abilities to be critical. It absolutely doesn't. You know, again, I talked earlier about the, the potential slippery slope of being afraid to post anything negative. But again, I think that's more of a cross that bridge when we get there type scenario. But this alone does not in any way hamper your ability to be critical of the games industry, game developers, game publishers, anything. It absolutely doesn't. And that's what pisses me off about this because, because these guys, you know, keep in mind, these guys are professionals, right? <laughs> Theoretically. Um, I'm trying to keep the jabs to a minimum. I'm trying to, believe me, I've got a ton of them that I would like to make, but I'm trying to myself be semi-professional. But these guys know what they're doing, right? These guys are professional writers, professional journalists. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing when they say shit like this. They know that when they, if they, when they phrase it in such a way that they can't do their job. They can't be critical of this game so that you, the consumer, knows to be careful. That you, the consumer, can be warned before they try to pull the wool over your eyes. We're, hey, we're just trying to do our jobs. We're trying to warn you about these problems. But these publishers and developers, they're the big mean guys and they won't let us tell you these things. We're trying to protect you from buying these bad games or falling into this crappy DLC schemes. But hey, you know, we're our hands are tied. We can only do so much. That's bullshit. That I have a huge problem with. Be honest. You can have again. You can have differing opinions on this whole uh, how you feel about them being blacklisted for the leaks, but present it as such. Don't try to turn this into something else. Don't straw man it just so that it makes you guys look better because that's exactly what you're doing. Because think of it this way. Bethesda and Ubisoft are in a, a not in a kind of a negative position here, right? They don't have a press outlet, so to speak. They can make a press statement on their website, but they're kind of now they've kind of Kotaku has kind of put them in a position where they either have to ignore it and hope it goes away, which is probably their best bet, or Make a statement and say, look, either we didn't blacklist them or we did it for these reasons, which at that point they're admitting that they blacklist people for things, which in itself is going to kind of piss some, at least some people off. Right. Uh, or, you know, so they're not in a position where they can really respond without, they don't have the power of the media, right? The media is going to stick together when it comes to, the sites, Kotaku, Rock, Paper, Shotgun, most of those sites are going to defend each other. We know this. And if Bethesda or Ubisoft tries to defend themselves, I think their outlets for such are, are not as great, right? Because Kotaku and all these other sites, are, ours, are going to write articles defending themselves. And they're the ones with the readership. Nobody goes to Bethesda to read their press releases, right? Um, and I'm not, I feel like I'm not expressing my thought correctly here but the long story short is both Bethesda and Ubisoft are in kind of a nasty situation as far as do you respond at all do you not respond and hope it goes away no matter what I think their response will be kind of spun in a negative light and you might say that's unfair but again look at how they responded to the blacklist by painting it in a different way and then attacking it by straw manning it and then attacking that straw man. That kind of shows me that they're totally willing to, to do this. Anyway, I wanted to close on this interesting observation that I made. This is the very first time we've ever seen the gaming press face backlash for something it's done that's questionable. It's very interesting to me to see that their reaction has been to ignore the cause of the consequences and instead create a scary boogeyman and attack that instead. Huh. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to leave comments in the comments section below, and I'll see you next time.